Which of these parables were not spoken about prayer? Hello, welcome. Today we'll be talking about how to prepare for hot questions in Bible Knowledge SPM. We'll be looking at similar stories. And if you have answered the question just now, which of these parables were not spoken about prayer? It is the parable of the barren fig tree. Some of us, when we thought of this story, we will be thinking that, hey, this is the one when Jesus cursed the tree and the tree died. And the lesson was that if you pray by faith, you would be able to see what you prayed for. However, that is not where this parable is about. And so today we'll be looking at these three parables, okay? The parable of the friend at midnight, the parable of the widow and the judge, and the parable of the Pharisees and tax collector. And we will see as we put them side by side uh, that it will be helpful for us to remember them uh, by seeing their similarities and their differences. In the past year questions, we do see that sometimes in SPM, they will ask two different parables together. For example, they ask that the parable of the friend at midnight together in the same question with the parable of the Pharisee and tax collector. What that means is you will need to know both of this parable to be able to answer one question well. That is because these two questions, these two stories are the shorter passages. Uh, therefore, they need both questions to be able to fit uh, enough marks into the question. If we look at the th third parable, parable of the widow and the judge in chapter 18, this one alone gained 12 marks, so usually it is a, stain, a stand alone question. Another thing about prayer is that in the book of Luke, you will notice that Jesus prayed seven times. Please look at your textbook or your guidebook, page seven Roman numeral and you will see that all seven times are being listed out with their references. Other than that, Jesus also taught his disciples to pray. There will be a lesson on the Lord's Prayer in chapter 11, which is the passage that's directly before the parable of the friend at midnight. So let's move on. When we're looking at similar stories, we want to look at the similarities and the differences. When you put the story side by side, you should be able to see it. So today we are looking at all three of these stories together. But before we look at the similarities and differences, let us first briefly glance through all three stories. Bear in mind that this is not a video that teaches you how to memorize the tree. Please watch the other videos on how to memorize long passages. Now the parable of the friend at midnight. Uh, there's a very short story, it's only four verses long. But you will notice that in this story, there's few things. Number one, you will notice that there is a friend. The friend looks for his friend, asking that he will be given or borrow three loaves of bread. There is a cultural background in the Middle East, where if they have a friend coming over to the house, the owner of the house in their hospitality must provide some food for them. It's a cultural expectation. However, he don't have it as he was asking from his friend, but he's asking at a bad time. It was at night, it was in midnight, all the families have gone to sleep. If you are familiar with how they sleep in those days, it is a one, it's like a one room apartment. Uh, all the family will lie down on the floor sleeping together. So this friend of his says, don't bother me. The door is already locked and my children and I are in bed. I can't wake everybody up just to go dig up some loaves of bread and give it to you. But in verse 8 at the middle, it says yet. Okay, yet. When you see the word yet, it talks about a comparison be between, in this story, between God and with this friend of his. Okay, yet he will get up and give you everything to you need because you are not ashamed to keep on asking. So in verse 13, it tells a little bit of what Jesus is trying to say. Jesus said that bad as you are, you would do this how much more your good father in heaven. Okay, so this is the parable of the friend at midnight. Now we look at the parable of the widow and the judge. 
Now the parable of the widow and the judge, we notice that it's quite similar. There's also two persons there, but this one, instead of a friend, there is an evil judge. This judge neither feel God nor respected people. However, there is this poor widow. This widow keep on coming to him and pleading for justice. And for a long time, the judge, because he's an evil judge, he refused to do the right thing. He refused to act on behalf of the widow. But finally, look at that in verse 5. Yet, he says, yet, because of all the trouble this widow is giving me, I will see to it that she gets her right. Oh my, even an evil judge did the right thing because she was pestering him. Of course, this one is comparing God with an evil judge. The point is, if an evil judge will do it, how much more the good judge, the righteous judge, will God not judge in favor of his own people? Okay, so that is the parable of the widow and the judge. The third parable is the parable of the Pharisee and the tax collector. This parable is slightly different. We do see two different two, two pers- people here, but uh, they are not comparing to God. It's comparison between these two persons. The first one is a Pharisee. The Pharisee's prayer and attitude says that I am doing all right. Okay, In his prayer, he says, I'm great. I'm a great guy. Uh, compared to the second guy in verse 13, which is a tax collector, he, this guy is, uh, is a sinner and so in his prayer, his attitude, his humility is so evident. And so the lesson which is explained in verse 14 is that the tax collector and not a Pharisee was in the right with God when he went home. For all who make themselves great will be humble and all who humble themselves will be made great. The lesson here is humility. Now, when we take all these three stories together and put it side by side, we will be able to notice a few things. The first thing is that in all three stories, Jesus told it to his disciples. In other words, the context is not the Pharisees, it's not the people, uh, it's his disciples and he's trying to teach them something in all of the parables all right we also notice that in all the stories there are two characters there Uh, in the first one we have a friend with his friend in the second one the two characters are a bad judge and a widow and in the third story there are two characters are the tax collector and the pharisees In the first two, it is a comparison. Look at that. It is comparing God to the people. The first one compared God with a friend, a good friend. Uh, The second story compared God to an evil judge. And you'll notice that there is a flow in it. When God is being compared to a good friend, the lesson is that you need to persist in prayer because if a friend will do the right thing for you, God will do it too because he's way better than your friend. And so in the continuing teaching by Jesus, he says that if your own father will do good things for you, if your own father will treat you well, how much more will the best father in heaven will do you well? Therefore, persist in prayer. The second one is comparing God to a bad judge. The problem is that if the bad judge, right, listen to what the corrupt judge says. Now, the comparison is this. If God, the good judge, the righteous judge, the perfect judge, will God not judge in favor? Verse 8, I tell you, he will judge in their favor and do it quickly. All right. So this one shows that God is better than the evil people and therefore God will do it. In the first one, God is better than even the good people. And if the good people do it, God, how much more will he do it? The third one is a comparison, not to God, a comparison between believers and others. He's telling his disciples, you need to learn humility. You need to be humble and do not despise others. Because in verse nine, Jesus 
lesson says that Jesus told this parable to the people who were sure of their own goodness and despised everybody else. And so he used the example of the Pharisees. We shouldn't be like that, Jesus says. You should not be like those people who are proud. You should not be like that who are sure of their own goodness, but we should learn to not despise others and be humble in our prayer. And so this tree is the conclusion. When you look at it, it's easier for you to understand the tree and you will mix them up as well as it will be helpful when you try to memorize the tree stories. However, this is not enough for you to answer the questions well. You need to use different techniques. You need to memorize the entire story. Memorize the entire story here and here. And only by doing both can you be able to do well in your exam questions. So now I'll end with this. In SPM 2000, the question asked was, what did Jesus teach about prayer? Now there's a lot of things for you to write about. You can talk about Jesus teach about persistency, Jesus teach about humility, and just elaborate on that according to the parables that is being mentioned. There is not yet being asked in SPM, is this question, what did these parables teach about the father's character? In the first two story, remember the parable of the friend at midnight and the parable of the widow and the judge? It shows that the father's character is so different. The father's character is not evil like this judge. He's a good judge. The father's character is a good father, way better than our own earthly father. How much more will he do things? quickly all right so this one you can consider think about it and prepare yourself for different kinds of hot questions okay so if you look at this this one will give you a good idea of where to go thank you very much see you all again next time